So I guess you understand now order by, take, select, where, to list, forage. This shouldn't be a big problem anymore. Are you ready for the next layer, next level of complexity? Let's add group by. Group by is super important and we are going to need it quite frequently. So let me show you what I would like to have. Display the number of modals per make that appeared after um, I think we have a year, correct? Yes, here we have it. That appeared after 1959. Display the number of modals. Modals would be Golf. Per make would be Volkswagen. And appeared after 1995 would be a filter on the car year. Now this one is more complex and I don't ask you how it works. I want to show you how it works. Let's start with the modals per make. We will write cars dot group by car goes to car dot make. Do you understand what grouping means? Group by. Understand how that works, what grouping is, generally, not just in C-sharp. Yes? It's like a group in uh, SQL. R correct. It's like a group in SQL. But this doesn't answer my question. Do you understand grouping in SQL? <laughs> no. <laughs> I guess so. It's not trivial to understand. Let me show you an example. Don't follow along, just follow along in your mind, okay? Imagine that we have the following data, make, modal. Make is Volkswagen, Golf, Volkswagen, Beetle, uh, Toyota, Prius, Toyota, um, uh, uh, I don't have, no, let, let's take something else. Let's take Tesla, modal three, and then we have another Volkswagen. Um, this is the Polo. I don't know. That's okay. So how does grouping work? Let's make it like that. Grouping works like that. First, whenever you do grouping, you have to sort by the column by which you would like to group. So we have to move the polo, this one, up here. So now we have all the Volkswagens, the Toyota, and the Tesla. Okay, if we sort it, we have to also cut and paste it here because Tesla comes before Toyota. Grouping, that means that we go through all the distinct values. We have Volkswagen, Tesla, and Toyota, and we put them into different groups. So this will be the group one, Volkswagen, it works like this. It takes a look at the previous value, compares it with the current value. If these two things are the same, the value, uh, the grouping value stays the same. So we have still group one. We have still group one. If we compare Volkswagen to Tesla, it changes. So we have group two. And if we compare Tesla to Toyota, we have group three. And now we have three different groups and we call the make the group key. So key of group one is Volkswagen. So we can change that label and can say this is the group key. What is the group key for the group one? It's Volkswagen, Volkswagen, Volkswagen. The group key for group two is Tesla and the group key for, Toyota, for, for all these ones is Toyota. So we have this group, this group, this group. And now we have a single group key. We can write it like that, merge it, you see? So we have the group Volkswagen, we have the group Tesla, and we have the group Toyota. And to this group here belongs again an I enumerable of cars. So we group 
the cars into group keys, which are yeah, the level, the, the column on which we do the grouping. Sounds very difficult, but let's take a look. The result of our group by method is an I enumerable of I grouping of string and car data. What does that mean? We have a group key which is of type string. What is the group key? The make. Volkswagen, Toyota and Tesla. And per make we have a collection of car data which belongs to this make. Is anybody still following me? Yeah. Or did I lose a lot of you? I guess I lost a lot of you because it's really complicated. Let me show you how that looks like. If I do a two list and do um, for each uh, item goes to console right line item something like this and if I run this guy I will get these very strange grouping things. It's difficult to understand what grouping is but change your code now to item.key. See what's going on? Now we get all the group keys. We get the distinct makes. We get something like Maybach only once because we grouped the data by make. It's just like in my Excel. We do not get Volkswagen three times, but because we grouped based on this column, we get the group key only once. Understand what I mean? Good. Nice. Now we have this group by car make. The next thing is that we want to have the number of modals. Anybody has an idea how we can do that? Yep. I would say, uh, as a, as a question, yeah, yeah. the compute not the makes, the comma selection, the makes and the zugehörigen uh, model. Yeah? Wie könnt ihr das schreiben? How can I write that? Dot select. Dot select. Okay, I, I agree. Select. C, lambda. Let's take a look what's inside of C. Inside of C is the key, which is the make. And if I scroll down a little bit, I also will find no, nothing else. Just the key. That's fine. Huh? We want to have the number of modals per make and you are thinking about the return type of the select, right? What we can easily write is we can write an anonymous class. This is how you can create an object without the class. Yeah. Does that help you? Yeah, uh, that was my question. If you want to. Yep, just I want to have the result, then however we reach it. Then C dot key. C dot key, that will give me an object that contains the key. Okay? And C dot sum. C dot yeah. sum. I think count. count, I agree. Count Sorry. and Hmm? C dot what? C dot modal? Yeah. Doesn't work. There is no C dot modal. <laughs> C dot count is a very good idea. C dot count is a very good idea. What would give us this? First we get a, an error because we need to assign a name. Let's say number of modals. Then the error goes away. What will give us this query? 
help your colleague. It will give us per make the number of modals because we are counting per group how many items we have in each group. Think of the Excel. If we say count on the group, we get the number of items inside the group. For Volkswagen, this will be three. For Tesla, this will be one. And for Toyota, this will also be one. Get the idea? So we can ask for the key and we can then apply a nested link query, a link query inside the link query based on each group. Oops, sorry, I clicked on something I don't want. So let's print this thing to list for each item console right line. Let's print the item.key and let's print the item.number of models. If I run this, it will show me that we have, here you see it, two Ferraris, for instance. Let's verify that this really is true. Just look for Ferrari. This is one and this is the second one. See? So that this, this looks good. We have two Ferraris, so it seems that our program looks pretty good. Do you understand what we have written here? With group by, we are creating a grouping with a group key and each item is again a collection of rows which belong to this group. I repeat myself consciously, a group key and for each group key we have a collection of data rows which belong to this group. This is why we can apply link to each group. But we are not done yet because here we have a filter. That appear after 1995. Yes. Can I would, uh, before you do the group by, yes, that's a possibility. So we can say uh, where car car dot year greater equal 1995. Something like this. Uh, let's check the Ferrari. The Ferrari is 2006, and the second one, no, Ferrari. 2007 and 2006. So the Ferrari should sh still be present with two items. And here it is. Let me check again. 2006 and 2007. Okay. I will give you a chance to read this code again to try to understand it. Good, next level. I will now change the requirements and say that appeared after 2008. We can just change the year to 2008 and we know that Ferrari should now be no longer in the list because we don't have a Ferrari which appeared after 2008 in our list. Let's try it, let's run it and if we are lucky we don't see a Ferrari anymore. That looks pretty good, we can take a look, no Ferrari anymore. But now I would like to add a little bit complexity makes should be displayed with a number of zero 
if there are no modals after 2008. Understand what I mean? The result should contain Ferrari zero if we don't have any Ferraris after 2008. Who? What can we do? Who has an idea? Anybody else? Good. Give us your idea. You would delete the where. I will do that. Uh, just to make sure, I will put it into the clipboard because maybe we find a better place for the where clause. Then after the select, I will put the where. After the select, that will be pretty difficult because if I put it after the select clause, we don't have the year anymore because after the select clause we only have the key which is the make and the number of modals five we cannot take a look into each row so nope that's not a good idea let's undo that I'll show you the trick. Do you understand what I did? Let's check whether, it's, whether it works. Okay, let's run it. And if we are lucky, yes, Ferrari zero. Why does it work? Exactly. Yep. Yeah. What we essentially do is we take the group Volkswagen. We know that part of this group are these elements here. And then we specify a where clause, but not over the entire data set, but we specify a where clause inside of this data set. Understand what I mean? I am not filtering before I do the grouping. I am now filtering on the grouped data. So I get a group of models for Ferrari. And before I print the group, uh, the, the, the list of elements per Ferrari, I filter them. Before we did the filtering and afterwards we did the grouping. After the filter, Ferrari was gone. So the result didn't contain any Ferrari record. Understand what I mean? Do you see the difference? And luckily, because this is so common that you want, would like to count something which is filtered, we can shorten that. We can take the lambda method here, remove the where clause here, and put the lambda method directly into the count. So count optionally takes a filter and counts only those elements which return true for this filter. So if I run this guy, we should still see uh -huh, a Ferrari. Did you think that link is trivial? Do you still think that link is trivial? No, it isn't. Definitely not. There is a nice principle in software design, which is called Simple things should be simple, complex things should be possible. And that's link. If you have a very simple query, it's very simple to write. Complex queries are complex to write, but they are possible. Questions to this example here? Clear? Ready for the next one? Next one. Display a list of makes that have at least two models that appeared 
after 1995. No, that, that's boring. Uh, again, this, this is, let's change it a little bit so we have something new. Display a list of makes that have at least two models with greater or equal 400 horsepower. I have no idea if we have such makes. Get the idea? I want to find out how many makes build really, how many car manufacturers build really powerful cars. Not just one powerful car, but multiple powerful cars. Cars dot what? Uh -huh. Where hopefully yes, uh, done. Where car goes to car dot horsepower greater equal four hundred. Got it. Now we have a list of cars which with at least four hundred horsepower. Good. Good first step. Anybody else? What can we do now? Do you think that grouping would now be a good idea? Yes. Whenever you have something like a list per something, you always need grouping. Good. Let's do a group by. Group by, and we group by what car uh, make, of course. Good. Now we have a grouping by make. Select. Select. I agree. Very good. I like that. Select by what or select what? So the same as above? I think we can do pretty much the same as above, right? So we can say something like make equals car.key and uh, number of powerful cars equals to what? Car dot count. Nice. I like that. So now we have the number of cars with at least 400 horsepower and the corresponding make. But we want to have those that have at least two models. Yes? You want to do another filter where? Here? Inside of the select? No, we don't need to print zero. We only want to have a list of makes. Exactly, and that's the point. Now we can apply another where make goes to make dot number of powerful cars e greater or equal to. Do you understand the principle? We now have two different where clauses. The first where clause operated on the raw list. The second where clause operates on the grouped data. Well, this is not trivial. I understand that. Let's try it. Do the two list for each make goes to console right line make make. If I run this thing, let's see if we have any makes. Yes. We have some. For instance, Hummer. Question. Yes. Yes. What you could do, what you are now suggesting, is to comment this one and to here write a block of code and do something, if I understand you correctly, do something like if, if make dot number of greater equals two, then do a console write line, something like this, right? Yeah. yeah, that would definitely be possible. And it would be okay. But it is possible to do the where clause and today we are practicing link. So for my solution, 
I would like to stick with the console right line because then I can display uh, or describe the concept of having multiple where clauses. In SQL, structured query language, you have a group by, you already mentioned that. Could I also do a where clause on the grouped results in SQL? Or is there a different clause in SQL which I used for filtering grouped values? Yeah, having. having, exactly, correct answer. In SQL, you couldn't do that. You couldn't say where, where. You would have to say select group by having, correct. Right. Understand the principle? Good, nice, nice. Next one. Display the average horsepower per make. Anybody else? I like that you, you make suggestions, but I just want to see if anybody else also has have an idea. The first one is easy. Cars dot what? The average horsepower per make. Help me. Do we need a group by? Do we need a select? Where? What do you think? Who thinks we need a group by? Yeah, that's the majority. Okay, I follow you. Group by, that was a good idea. Group by what? Take a look at the requirements per make. So, make. If we do that, we get a list of makes and for each make, all the models with its data. So, how do we get the average horsepowers? Select. A select, I agree. And? Uh, again. again, just like above, I agree, make equals car dot key and then average horsepowers equals to what? Uh, car. Yes. Yes, exactly. It's as simple as that. Ah, ah, sorry. Average does not work. If you take a look at average, oh, sorry, of course it works. Sorry, sorry, my mistakes. We need this to tell what it should average. Sorry, my mistake. What's good? Everything's fine. So let's print these guys. Just copy this one and take a look whether it works. It should work. Run it. Oh, I don't display the average horsepower. Sorry, I have to do something like this. The make. And the average horsepowers. Now it's good. Now it's good. I want to try it and then I give you time. Yeah, looks good. Looks very good. Do you start to see a pattern how this works? I guess so. I'll give you another second to type in the code and think about potential questions that you might have.
Are you ready for the next level of complexity? Good. We are working our way towards the end boss. How many car how many makes build cars with horsepower between 0 and 100? 100 and 200, 101 and 200, 201 and 300, 301 and 400, not 3001. And I think the maximum, the maximum was what? I think 500, right? 500, yes, 500 was the maximum. So the last one is 401 to 500. So I want to have a range, I want to see 0 to 100 horsepower, 3 makes built cars in that horsepower range. 100 to 200, 5 makes built cars between 101 and 200 horsepower. Who? How could we approach that? Just tell me ideas. I will solve all your syntactical problems, but just come up with ideas. You have an idea. By the what? Okay, so what you would say is you would say cars dot group by car goes to now what is the grouping expression here? What you can write, I give you an idea, right? Car dot horsepower switch case, no I don't need a case here, sorry, lower equal 100 goes to 0 to 100, lower equal 200 goes to 101 to 200. Understand the principle? Did you know this syntax in C sharp? No. Isn't that cool? Yeah. C sharp 9, this is brand new hot stuff. This wasn't possible a few months ago, a few weeks ago, but now it is. Lower equal 300 goes to 201, 300. Lower equals 400 goes to 301 to 400. Else goes to 401 to 500. Can you read this code? Yeah. So we are now building groups, not just on a trivial property, but we are building groups on a calculated value which is with a switch expression. This is pretty damn powerful. I can tell you that many other programmers in other programming languages than C Sharp, they are envious. They, they would like to have something like this. This is not something that is available in all programming languages. It's really, really nice to be able to write that. How many makes build cars between these things here? Now we have a grouping by horsepower category, but we are not at the end. What would be the next one? Let me make a suggestion and then you can tell me whether it's correct. I will just copy the select up here and tweak it a little bit. I will say here horsepower category and here I will say number of I, number of makes equals to car dot count.
Is that correct? If I ask you like that, the answer is always no, of course. Why? Is this one here really the number of makes? No, it's the number of modals because the make Volkswagen creates multiple modals like the Golf, the Polo and so on. So here we are counting really the rows and not the makes. If we have Volkswagen, we count it three times. If we have the Golf, the Passat and the Polo. But we only want to count, uh, to count it once because the question was how many makes build any car in this range? Anybody has, yeah, you have a question, you have an, a suggestion? I'm guessing we need another Zipa. Pardon? I'm guessing we need another Zipa. Yeah, that's possible. We could do a group by, but we don't need a group by here because there is something which is, which is pretty powerful, which is called distinct. And if we take a look at what the distinct thing can, can do, it will return a distinct value based on this item. And what we can do, I will write it down and oops, I will write it down and then you can try to understand it and we will discuss it. We can say car dot select C goes to C dot make distinct. And if we want to have the number of makes, not a list of makes, we can do a count. Wow. Do you get the idea? What we say is build a group of data rows per category. And then we say for each line in our data file, just pick out the make. That will return for the, for the, for the, Toyota, 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 Tesla, 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 Ferrari, 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 Ferrari. Understand what I mean? For each line, we will get just the make. That distinct lets fall all the items together in a single line. What distinct essentially does is it changes this view. See that one? It changes this view with the four times Volkswagen into, boom, a single line with just one Volkswagen. This is what distinct does. Eindeutig. Just each value one time. Understand what I mean? And then we are just counting the distinct values. We are just counting the makes. Understand the, the, the concept? To list for each item, console, right line, we just say item.key, um, oh, HP category, like this, and the item dot number of make. I just want to check whether it works properly. Yep, looks good. We could sort it, but I think you get the idea how, how this works. Good, I will give you a second to write that down. Okay, let's quickly talk about what you need to remember from all this stuff. I am absolutely sure that some in this class are not 100% comfortable with this level of complexity in link queries. That's normal. It takes weeks and months and maybe years of practice in SQL or something like link to come up with queries like that. To be able to successfully complete this course, you need definitely to understand what where and select does. 
you need to understand simple group by scenarios, something like this. This is definitely necessary for completing this course. What you probably will not be asked in an exam is things like that, a nested group by, uh, sorry, a nested link query, or things like that, a switch expression in a single link query with subselects and distincts and counts and things like that. Nevertheless, it would be good if you remember things like that. It would be good if you practice things like that because that makes the difference between a great developer and an average developer. A great developer can use tools like that. But for this course, the basic things are sufficient if you just want to pass the course. If you want to get a real good grade, you should probably master more complex queries. Yeah? You will get a homework today where you can practice some link queries on your own and you will see there that you can earn extra points if you manage to write it in a single link query, but it's not absolutely necessary. You can also combine simpler link queries by writing a little bit of more code. That's fine. Questions so far concerning this one? Can anybody remember what I told you? How this syntax construct is called? It is called a switch expression in contrast to the classical switch statement that you might already know from other programming languages. Good? Good. So, Let me quickly show you the homework that you will have to do until next week. It is again a quiz where you have some starter code. I, I will give you the link in the next lesson, okay? Uh, the link to the GitHub classroom where you can create the data. Currently, just take a look at the screen. Um, it, is, it, it already contains some, some code and it also contains, as you can see here, a list of unit tests. So you can always check whether your functionality is already correct by running the unit test. At the beginning, the unit tests will all be red and at the end, all your unit tests should be green. That's the goal. You already know the drill. If you take a look at the library, here you see a quiz.c sharp. And if you take a look here, for instance, first one is really simple, get even numbers, exclusive upper limit, and you have to return an integer array. So you have to write some code which generates all the numbers between one and the upper limit and return an array of int. If you manage to write that, so replace just this line with your code, if you manage to write that, the first test is green. If we scroll down, the next one here, exclusive upper limits, but this time you have to calculate the square. Mm -hmm and so on. Get family statistics is a little bit more complicated and get letter statistics is again a little bit more complicated. You can take a look at home. Uh, how can you earn extra points? You can earn one extra point by solving all unit tests. Again, write an issue, mention me in that issue if you think that you uh, have earned one extra point. I will not give you a second extra point. You can just earn this time my deepest respect if you manage to implement each method in a single line of code. Yeah, that, not, no extra points, but this is just something, a question of honor. For those of you who want to have the extra challenge, try to find a solution in a single line of code. It is possible, definitely. Question? Um, are you also checking issues where you weren't mentioned because I didn't mention you in my issue, but uh... Uh, it is easier for me if you mention me explicitly. Should I edit now? No, I will find it out. But it's easier for me because then I get a notification. I'm not sure if I get a notification if you just add an issue. Okay. But I will take, definitely take a look. Yeah. yeah. When, when it comes to grading, I will also show you which extra points I have noted. And you have the possibility to tell me, hey, Mr. Stropek, you forgot that I created something like this. In many cases, for the grade, it's not a question of one point more or less. 
if you do all the homeworks, you get a lot of points if you do, yeah. But if, when it comes to really a single or two points, check me and I will show you my notes and you can check whether I have uh, noted everything correctly. Do you understand this homework? It's .NET 5, it's completely up to date, so I think it shouldn't be that complicated. I guess it will take you maybe an hour, maybe two, maximum, then it should be done. Good? Yes, of course, I can send the classroom link in Discord. That's not a problem, I will do that. I will do that in either the next or the, um, the following lesson. We had a question here? No? Good. So your colleague showed you at the beginning of this, today's uh, series of lectures, um, showed you the basics of Link. And now we took the time to dive in deeply. We understood now what I enumerable is, how deferred execution works. We worked with a lot of different link operators like where, select, skip, take, group by, order by, order body sending, count, max, sum, and many of them. And in the next two exercise lessons that we have together, we will take this knowledge and take the previous exercise, the one with the CSV, you no, know, with the tab delimited data, and we will try to solve this homework together by applying this knowledge about link. Understand what I mean? Yeah, this is our goal for the exercise lesson for today. At this point in time, do you have any questions about link anymore at the moment that we should discuss? No? Good. I will check in the code so you have it if you want to remember some concepts when preparing for the exam. But with that, I would like to close this lesson and we have a short break, I think five minutes. And after five minutes, we'll go into the exercise lesson, okay? Good. Enjoy the break. Thank you.